In this video, we'll go over a really brief history of Reed Solomon codes and mention a few of their many applications. Recall the definition of Reed Solomon codes. We have n distinct evaluation points, alpha 1 through alpha n, and parameters q and n and k. Then the Reed Solomon code of dimension k over fq with those evaluation points is defined like this. So it's the set of all vectors which are evaluations on those evaluation points of low degree polynomials. We saw in a previous video that Reed Solomon codes meet the singleton bound. Really cool. This idea of evaluating low degree polynomials and calling it a code is such a nice idea. Where did it come from and where is it used? Reed Solomon codes were invented by Irving Reed and Gustav Solomon in 1960. Reed and Solomon were at Lincoln Lab at MIT at the time. In their original paper, here it is, they introduced Reed Solomon codes and showed, as we've already observed, that they have this really great trade off between rate and distance. One thing you might have been wondering after the previous video where we observed this is okay, so they have a great trade off between rate and distance, but how can we efficiently decode them from errors? It turns out we can, and this is not at all obvious. In fact, Reed and Solomon didn't actually know how to do that when they first proposed the code. So if you go take a look at this paper, the original decoding algorithm is not at all optimal. So here's Reed and Solomon's original decoding algorithm for Reed Solomon codes. Let's say I have a code word, so it looks like this, evaluations of some low degree polynomial f, and then some of those evaluations get messed up. Let's say this one was supposed to be f of alpha n minus 2, and someone went and changed it to 7 or something like that. So we have a few of these uh, mess ups. Okay, so we have this corrupted code word now with some errors. What's the algorithm? Well, let's just choose k symbols at random. Let's say these symbols. Let's interpolate a degree k minus 1 polynomial through them. And let's hope that we avoided all of the bad symbols. If we did avoid all the bad symbols, we'll get it right. If we hit a bad symbol, maybe we'll get it wrong. Repeat this a few times to take majority vote. This algorithm works OK if there are very few errors, but you can check that it's not going to get us all the way up to the distance minus 1 over 2, which is what we would hope for from a decoding algorithm. So here's a brief timeline of decoding algorithms for Reed Solomon codes. As we discussed earlier, they were invented in 1960. And around the same time, people were developing decoders for BCH codes. We're going to talk about BCH codes in a future video. They're related to Reed Solomon codes. And these BCH codes decoders worked for some, but not all, Reed Solomon codes. Then later in 1969, there was an improvement to this BCH decoder known as the Berlekamp Massey algorithm. This actually remains one of the standard decoders for Reed Solomon codes today. It uses the dual view of Reed Solomon codes that we saw in a previous video. That is, where we view the code words as coefficients of some polynomial that vanishes on certain points. Then some time passed, and then in 1986, Berlekamp and Welch developed a new algorithm of a very different flavor than the Berlekamp-Massey algorithm. In particular, it uses the original view where the message is the coefficients of the polynomial. Then later on in the 90s, people started thinking about how to decode Reed Solomon codes beyond half of the distance. How is that possible, you might ask? Well, it's called list decoding, and we're going to return to it in a later video, and we will see some of these decoders when we get there. How about applications of Reed Solomon codes? Well, because there weren't very many good algorithms to begin with when Reed Solomon codes were invented, they didn't have a lot of applications off the bat. However, later on, starting in the 70s, they found many high profile applications, for example, in the Voyager space program and in compact disks. Nowadays, they're used all over the place. They aren't so popular for communication anymore. There are other codes with faster algorithms, but they are used a lot for storage, for example, in hard drives and distributed storage systems. And they're also used in things like QR codes. So this QR code here, this is a polynomial that's been turned into binary in some way. We'll talk more about how you would turn a Reed Solomon code into a binary code later in the course. There are also a lot of applications beyond communication and storage, and we'll see some of those also in later videos. In the next video, though, we're going to focus in on one of these algorithms for decoding Reed-Solomon codes from errors, the Berlekamp-Welch algorithm.